The Leominster City Council meeting is funded in part by DeCarolis Insurance Agency at www.decarolisinsuranceagency.com. Twenty-two, And it reads, Massachusetts Electric Company doing business as National Grid in Verizon, New England, Inc. request permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way. Lancaster Street, National Grid to relocate one J-O pole on Lancaster Street, beginning at a point approximately 530 feet north of the center line of the intersection of Sage Avenue and continuing approximately 20 feet in an east direction. Relocate pole number 81 to 84, 81-84, 25 feet in southern direction from its current location. Homeowner of number 644 has requested pole location due to proposed new driveway. Wherefore, it prays that after due notice and hearing is provided by law, it be granted for a location for and permission to erect and maintain poles and wires, together with such, with such sustaining and protecting fixtures as it may find necessary, said poles to be erected substantially in accordance with the plan, filed herewith marked Lancaster Street, hyphen Lominster, hyphen Massachusetts. Also seeking permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above or intersecting public ways for purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Your petitioner agrees to reserve space for one cross arm at a suitable point on each of said poles for the fire, police, telephone, and telegraph signal wires belonging to the municipality and used by it exclusively for municipal purposes. So this evening, uh, my name is Sue Shalafu Zephyr. I'm the chairperson of the Public Service Committee. And um, subcommittee members include uh, Councilor at Large Claire Frieda, who is the uh, clerk, and also third member, Councilor Bill Brady from Ward 1. So is there anybody here from National Grid that would like to speak about this, this evening, this petition? Great. Could you give your name, sir, please? Yes, uh, Matt Vieira. I am representing National Grid tonight. Good evening. Good. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, the, the owner of 60, uh, 644 Lancaster Street is going to build, is going to cut a new driveway. And the pole existing currently where it is, it's going to be in front of, in the right in the middle of this driveway. So, we're proposing there's a fire hydrant about eight feet on the southern direction of the of the pole, the existing pole. So we're gonna remove that pole and install it about 25 feet on the southern di southern direction. So it's, gonna, it's not gonna be in front of no, any new windows. It's gonna have the same clearance from the road as the, the previous one. And you know, it's gonna have clearances from, from the fire hydrant as required by code. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and the neighbors have requested this. I mean, the residents at 644. Yes. That's where this came from. Okay, great. Yes. Already, thank right, you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, is there any member of the public who would like to, oh, should I go to the council first? Okay, sorry. Um, does anybody on the city council have any questions or um, comments about this petition? No. No, okay. Seeing, right. no. seeing none, is there anybody in the public who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to the petition? Thank you, sir. Just please give your name and address. I'm Stephen Elaine from 644 Lancaster Street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just requested to have the pole moved over to the left because I'm having a new driveway. But in January, I received an agreement that they said I will be billed $11,000 to move this pole. So, I mean, you can have this uh, and the picture. So. I mean, we can cancel this right now because I'm not going to pay $11,000 to have this thing moved. And I can show you the picture of where the pole is going to go to from left to right. You can have that. So basically, this is the pole, and that's the fire hydrant, and that's the property line. So I think they want to move it to the left. And I'm, I wanted to put a driveway in front of my house right there. All right, but the cost of it is? $11,000. Right. All right. And also it said... Once we receive that payment, 
Well, after that signed sheet, we'll go, we'll move forward with everything. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, that was in January, and then I got this last or two weeks ago saying well, they're gonna have a city council, so I never contacted them to do this, mm -hmm. so like I said, I can't do this for $11,000, so. All right, well, thank you for that yeah. explanation. Uh, Mr. Vieira, do you have any comment on that, or? I was, I was just gonna say that um, the engineer, I can contact him. Uh, to get in contact with you because I'm just representing it um, here. He couldn't make it tonight. So I am not sure about any billing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I, I don't um, do we deal with financials, but I can't have him contact you in regards to this. Sure, I don't have to pay for it. I'll have it done, but okay. I pay Sure, thank you. All right, thank you both very much. All right, so, sure, Council Frieda, do you have a question? Uh, just um, through you, Madam Chair, what, uh, who requested the poll move? I did. You requested it? Yes. And now you're finding out it's $11,000, is that well, it? Well, I requested it in June of last year because that's when I had my driveway, what, uh, what's it called, uh, renovation done. Yeah. Okay. And then they said, well, we're gonna have to pay for it. So I said, Okay. Absolutely. And then when I got on January, I got that bill for eleven thousand dollars. I'm not signing this. I'll keep the there. I'm good. I'm sorry. And then when I had it requested, they said to have to keep the pole there to keep the other pole. If that pole's not there, the other pole might fall over. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a barrier. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to speak uh, either in favor or in opposition to this petition? Is there anybody, uh, final and last time, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor or in opposition? If not, I will declare the public hearing closed. company relents on the billing so how are we going to how are we going to determine that if the public hearing is closed I was thinking that they would resubmit a petition I mean this one doesn't is look like advertised again? yeah but they have to pay us back for the advertising cost okay I don't know. all right just just a thought okay either right. way is fine I'm sorry either way is fine I think we should close it I think if it comes back it comes back Oh. Yeah, I do have a question. Sure. So, um, was the petition closed or denied uh, tonight? It, well, we'll have a we'll have a uh, conversation, but it won't be denied. It would probably just be given leave to withdraw. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yes, okay. And with that, uh, the public hearing on this will be closed. This is a interview scheduled for 6.52. This is C-49, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor. Request the confirmation of the permanent appointment of Arthur Ebthal to the position of Director of Emergency Management. This is a regarding a three-year term, which would begin in March of 2020. Mr. Ebthal is here, and I formally ask you, sir, if you would come in and you can take a seat at the table there. Oh, certainly. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening.
Mr. Epto, welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Pauline Cormier. I am the chair of the Ways and Means uh, Committee. And I can tell you the clerk of the committee is Councillor Frank Ardinger, and the third member is Councillor Todd Deacon. Um, so our purpose tonight is to basically get a little more information from you, get to know you a little bit, um, so that the, the viewers at home can also get to know you a little bit. So um, we'll just jump right into this. I think we all have a copy of Mr. Ebthal, Ebthal? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. Mr. Ebthal's um, copy of the recommendations that were sent, a recommendation letter, and a copy of his resume you should have in your packets. So, Mr. Ebthal, I will start the process here. If you just introduce yourself and tell us a little, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Arthur, and uh, I'm from the city of Lemster. My wife, Catherine, and I uh, raised our family here. We have three children. Uh, they're all in their 20s now, but uh, our youngest is a nursing student at Worcester State University. In uh, my current job, I teach, I teach leadership and history at WPI, and prior to that, I, th I spent 33 years in the United States Army. I retired from the Army in 2018. I spent a great deal of time as a, at, uh, in one of my final positions as an Army strategist, I did uh, a lot of planning, including all hazards planning and risk mitigation for uh, all levels of government, uh, federal, state, and local. I worked with all levels of government in uh, disaster response and recovery. Uh, many disasters, um, a tornado, uh, several hurricanes, including Superstorm Sandy from 2012, uh, nor'easter storms, winter storms, flooding, and a terrorist strike are some that uh, I both planned for and then worked in the recovery efforts and in the response efforts. And what, what drew you to, the, um, to, to apply for this position? Um, I have a vested interest. I, I live here. So, uh, but I'm very interested in it. I spent a good deal of my career working in this and planning for it and uh, planning different response plans to it. So it's uh, something I'm extremely interested in and well versed in actually. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Thank and, you I, and I want to thank you for, for stepping up and applying for this position. I, I know that there was a committee formed, uh, applications went out, uh, and, I, and I know that uh, you're Referral here this evening comes with a strong referral from, from those that were on the committee and, uh, and opened it up. What I want to do now is just open this up to other may members of my committee that may have some more specific questions for you. Um, Councilor Ardinger. Well, uh, again, thank you, Colonel, for showing up tonight and being here promptly. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. That's your background, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and again, I'd like to uh, second that, uh, Councilor Cormier said. Congratulations and thank you for your service for 33 years. That's quite a job, Colonel. Uh, th thank you. Um, I do have to admit, I've known you for a number of years, and I found you to always be a man of your word, and whenever you start, start to do something, you follow through with it 100%, so I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, working with uh, uh, a civilian organization, and you would have a tough you know, tough time to fill Jim LeBlanc's shoes. Uh, I mean, you know, he's a, an institution in another circle. You know, you'll be following a tough act, you know. But anyway, uh, what do you see that you will be able to bring to the uh, uh, OEM that maybe has been missing? I don't know that I can bring something particularly that's been missing, but I know that I can expand, enhance, continue, and to keep it strong and to keep Lemister protected. The mission of the OEM, the Office of Emergency Management, is to protect the city and to protect the citizens of the city. We can do this. We can mitigate, we can plan in advance to, so that we uh, make any disaster smaller or even if possible to prevent it. We can do the thorough planning. We can recruit uh, volunteers. Volunteers are the secret to our success, right? We can't do it without the volunteers. And so if we have a strong volunteer program where we recruit, we train, we develop, we 
uh, really need to provide them a career as a volunteer and the recognition. And with that, we respond rapidly, decisively, and we recover. So our recovery really is ongoing, but I want to say that some of the best led operations start with thorough planning beforehand. And so I want to continue with a thorough planning effort that if we can avoid a disaster or mitigate it, make it smaller for impact on Lemster in this area, we'll do that first, and then we'll lead our way through it. Volunteers, again, are the secret to our success, and I think a strong volunteer program, a recognition program where we recognize them for their efforts, because they're really doing this out of both the best intentions and truly from the heart, right? So, but volunteers need to be retained. They need to be recognized. They need to be awarded for their efforts and all the expertise and their time that they give us. So I look forward to, to being in a volunteer organization like this, being part of it. The, in the Army, we had an expression that never failed us, and it was mission first, people always. One is not above the other, but if you take care of your people, you will accomplish your mission. Councilor Arringer, if I can, I just want to stop you there just for a moment. Yeah. It's 7 o'clock, and by law, I have to start the meeting, so we're going to start the meeting, Certainly. and then we will take a recess, and we'll come right back to your interview. So at this, at this time, will everybody please stand and join me for a salute to the flag? <clears throat> Thank you all very much. I'd now like to call the meeting for uh, February 28th, 2022 of the Lemister City Council to order and begin with a roll call of councilors, beginning with Council Bedanza. Here. Councilor Cormier. Present. Councilor Ardinger. Present. Councilor Angelini. Present. Councilor Brady. Present. Councilor Shalafu Zephyr. Present. Councilor Deacon. Present. Councilor Frieda. Present. And I am present. All nine members are present. Madam um, Vice President, do you have records to approve this evening? Mr. President, I do have minutes to approve. I have reviewed them. Um, I, I would just ask the council if there is any councilors who have uh, any corrections or, or issues with the minutes they'd like to share at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, councilor Shalafo Zephyr? I just had a couple, and I can email those to Diane. That's um, fine. Yeah, they're, they're not major, they're just a few, few corrections. Okay. Okay. <coughs> All right. Com Councilor Angelini. <coughs> Thank you. Um, somewhere I would suggest, uh, perhaps at the bottom of page five, uh, we're dealing with the, uh, the spill at the property in Lancaster Street. But just like somewhere in there, it be inserted that the licensee was given 30 days to comply with the uh, uh, terms and conditions of the council's permit uh, modification. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Council Brady. Uh, yeah, 27-22, uh, it's recorded as 9-0. I did abstain from that. All right, is there any other comments or questions? Council Frieda? Uh, yes, I would respectfully request that the uh, Vice Chair uh, withhold the uh, request to approve these tonight until we have a discussion. I have a, a question on the uh, vote for 645 Lancaster Street. <clears throat> okay. What And what is the question, Councilor Frieda? Well, the question is that it's not a, um, the vote is not an A vote, it's an abstention. Right. The, we've got a ruling from the city solicitor on those. We, are, we also got many follow-ups that I don't think the rest of the council received. I didn't see them were get the rest of the follow-ups that were those uh, Attorney Riley has followed forwarded. At the very least, I think an explanation as to why there's a refusal for my abstention. I did a quick calculation of my 34 years in this city, and it came to about 1,025 plus or minus meetings that I've been to. And my recollection does not give me one meeting where any counselor has ever 
been challenged on an abstention. Um, and our city solicitor has stated very clearly in some of his follow-ups that he's gone by consistency and past practice. And we have not had past practice where uh, counselors have been challenged on their abstention. At the, at the very least, the last three meetings going back, um, November 22nd, I believe it was, or the November meeting, um, yeah, one of the at-large counselors, and it was a prior uh, president, um, was respectful enough to, um, to accept the abstention uh, that she requested in a vote. It's January 24th, this very same issue of Lancaster Street came before us, and on January 24th, I abstained from that vote on calling the people into this council, and you said it was fine. The clerk actually asked what my abstention was, and I said it was a conflict of interest. Then you said that's fine. Council Frieda, we're talking about the February we're, And we are talking about that, and minutes. it's leading to this. Okay. It's absolutely right. Okay. And okay, if you would rather wait one more meeting, we can do that. I have, I have a legal opinion from Brian Riley. You have more than one legal opinion. He, you chose not and, to, and to and share he, the others. And he, expl I'm, I'm gonna tell you basically what he said. Yeah, he, I have it too. He, you, want, you want to read it? Okay, go right, go right ahead. So the follow-up came in on February 25th from Brian Riley. It said, uh, David and Caitlin, I spoke to Clear about this issue and wanted to provide a follow-up. First, I should have made a stronger recommendation as far as how the vote is counted in the minutes in this scenario. The rule provides that if a counselor requests to be excused from voting and that is not granted, he or she is recorded as having made a nay vote. If, however, the particular matter may indeed pose a conflict of interest or even just a potential conflict under general laws, chapter 268A, and the minutes only reflect that the vote was eight one or seven to two, et cetera, that will strongly suggest that said counselor participated in the matter. Under chapter 268A, one has participated even if they say nothing but only cast a vote. Therefore, it is very important that the minutes make clear that if the counselor requested to abstain and that it is not approved, that he or she did in fact abstain and their nay vote is only recorded as such to comply with rule 18. As I stated in the first opinion, I understand that a president seeks to see that all counselors vote unless there is conflict of interest, as the rule states. Given the potentially harsh results under Chapter 268A, Section 19, if an official participates in a matter in which he or she, their family or their employer, has an actual or foreseeable financial interest, uh, however, it should be sufficient to be excused if a counselor states that they have or may have a conflict under Chapter 268A. As noted previously, Chapter 268A itself does not require any detail or statement to ju justify recusal from participation. With a nine-member council, I expect that abstentions must be requested on a regular basis, so I want to try to be consistent in my advice as to avoiding Chapter 268A issues while still rep uh, respecting Rule 18. I hope this helps. Please feel free to share with the council, Brian Riley. Okay, so I'm gonna- I'm Which gonna, I will forward to the council. So I'm, I'm gonna point something out. I'm gonna read what the minutes say. <clears throat> First of all, nowhere in the discussion, nobody can argue that you participated in the discussion because you didn't. Not one place in the discussion does it show that you said anything. So you didn't participate there. And then it says, um, before the motion was made, Councilor Frieda requested to be excused from the vote. The president declined to approve the request for lack of information and counselor, this is important, and counselor Frieda did not participate. So Brian Riley's concern was that under the um, ethics um, issue, that as long as the minutes stated that you did not participate, that's, that's key, you did not participate, um, and then it goes on to say, in accordance with Rule 18, Councilor Frieda was recorded as a nay vote on the motion. So the minutes also explain the reason for the nay vote. The nay vote is merely because of Rule 18. I think the important thing here is that 
we want to make sure, and I, and I agree, that nobody can come back and say that you violated an ethics, an ethics law, okay? And it clearly says here that you did not participate. It, you did not participate, and a nay vote is because of Rule 18. So that is the main concern, is that we don't want you to be in a problem with an ethics problem. That, and if that's it says, not your main concern, Mr. It, President, and if it please, says, let's not. And if yes. it says you didn't participate, okay, then what other problem do we have? What you're asking me to do. Because the vote is not a nay vote. Okay. I did not, I abstain. I, I did not, I did not accept your abstention. Absolutely, and, I don't and, have and to, you have an okay? obligation to me and to the public to explain why you did not accept my abstention. I think I when explained you that very clearly. No, because I wouldn't you tell you why. You didn't give me a reason. You want, I don't have you to give you a reason. To, you want I told to, you I had a very personal situation. An, an extension and not give me a reason. I don't have to give you okay. a reason. The okay. state law does not require Listen. a reason. And this is, I, I don't want to challenge this further, and I will, because okay. I've you, already talked to an attorney. You can. Because this, this is very important. And if you also read and highlight Brian Riley's comment <clears throat> about a president realizing how, how they can jeopardize jeopardize another council. You do not have a right, and no other councilor has a right to you put a councilor in a position. You don't have a right a to tell me that I have to accept. Violating that I have statute. To, you don't have a right to tell me that I have to go on record to accept something when you don't want to tell you me You don't why. have to go on record okay. for anything, but yeah, the vote. Yeah, the vote should read seven to one with one abstention. Seven to one with one abstention. You did not. Not seven to two. Your abstention. I did not right. accept your abstention. I'm, I'm, I'm going to okay. challenge it further. Okay, and you may. It's a, it's a shame that we have to spend city dollars because anybody, you want to be stubborn enough. Does anybody else have for a personal it? issue? to come after me on a personal issue for whatever reason you have. I don't know what your reason is. I think, you, in fairness, you should say why, every, because I'm not gonna tell you my personal every, business. Every counselor gives a reason when they No, abstain. they don't. Yes, I just they listed do. I November wasn't meeting. president then. I don't know. You can ask that and president. And it was a courtesy I, of other counselors in the past, okay, other that, council presidents in the that's past. That's fine. You that can talk to it. that president and ask him why. You were okay? a council president for so, two years prior is, to that, are, there, are there are there any that. other objections to accepting the minutes? I'm going to respectfully report, request that you 14, hold off on these, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, that that'll be your decision. May I suggest a compromise as the person who wrote that part of the minutes and copied and pasted it from Brian's original opinion to try to appease everybody? Um, I don't believe I'd be able to change the vote because of our rules or procedure, but I do believe I'd be more than happy to further explain more of what happened around the circumstances? No, would, it, would it's, I, I'm trying to stress the importance of the situation that I am in. And it's not anybody's business what situation I am in. But it's serious enough that that vote needs to read what the vote was. And I think your, ob your obligation, um, Madam Clerk, is to record the vote as the vote took place. If you wanna say that it was challenged by the, the president, that he, he chose not to agree with that. But the vote, my vote was an abstention. When, the, when it went around the board, I abstained from the vote. So I took the vote as per the legal opinion because I'm not a lawyer and I'm not gonna make that judgment And I think, call. I think Attorney but Riley I would did. be happy because we have a ticker of time that we do have to approve these minutes to expand on it if that would help you. But absolutely. I'm just offering. I, I agree that we should not accept the minute tonight. And I would respectfully request that the council support that. Okay, I'm gonna ask the vice president one more time. What is your wish? Mr. President, <clears throat> in light of everything that's gone on and in light of uh, the city clerk's um, willingness to go back over this, and, and I believe we can sit down, we do have uh, several other smaller changes we can make at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna ask for more time. Okay. On the records, on the minutes. Okay, so we will not approve those this evening. At this point, I'll ask for a motion for a recess. So moved. By Councilor Bonanza, seconded by Councilor Shelfo Zephyr. All those in favor? Those opposed? We now stand in recess. Councilor uh, Ardinger, I believe you had the floor, and I'll let you continue with your questions. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Colonel, I have to tell you, that was uh, probably m the most thorough answer I've ever received from a question like that. So uh, I appreciate your, you know, your thoughtfulness and your concern, or, you know, thoroughness. Uh, but uh, it was a great answer, and I appreciate it. And thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Councilor Deacon, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, and thank you for coming tonight. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you for your service of 33 years of dedicated service to our country. It's uh, very well noted. Your uh, resume is quite impressive. Thank you. And uh, me personally, I'm looking forward to uh, watching you and uh, lead this uh, agency. Thank you, sir. I have uh, just a couple things I just want to make a note of. Uh, in regards to volunteers, do you have any idea how to attract volunteers? Yes, sir, I do. I think that uh, volunteers come to us for different reasons and they come to us at different uh, points in their life. So everywhere from uh, college students all the way up to folks that maybe have retired from one or two careers. And I would like to go out and meet them in different parts of Lemister where they are and look at the skill sets that they have. Again, they're the secret to our success, I believe. And it could be uh, whether at um, different events at high schools, different events here at city <coughs> halls, uh, different events um, you know, in the summer, uh, fairs and parades and so forth. But I think that it's beneficial to go out and meet volunteers where we think that they will be, if you will. And a good day's work or a good week's worth is just to attract the, the attention of one good volunteer. In other words, a good volunteer force is built individually, a, a good man, a good woman that you meet that, that wants to volunteer their time, their effort, their expertise for the city, I want to go out and meet them where they are and, and talk to them about uh, what we can do in Lemster. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's all I have for questions. Thank you. Mr. Epthel, have you had the opportunity to meet any of the volunteers already at the... I've, I've met some of them. Yes, I have. Not, not all, okay. but, I, but, I, but I've met some of them. Okay. It, my question is just... I, I, your resume is is wonderful. Your experience is wonderful. What do you expect to? How do you expect to handle the the difference from going from a military background to dealing with civilians? Oh well, um, it's an excellent question. First of all, but I uh, I spent the last four years doing that. I went from uh, being an army officer and spending 33 years in the army to uh, teaching at a college. So uh, talk about culture shock. Um, <laughs> There, there was a little bit. So, uh, you know, the Army is wonderful, and it has its mission. Other organizations have different missions. So in my opinion, going into the organization, whether you're the newest guy, the youngest guy, or whoever you are, to get to know that organization for what its mission and purpose in life is. So that's my intent, to go in, and the Office of Emergency Management here in Lemister is, is not the Army. Uh, there was certainly, in terms of mission, there's some, some overlap, if you will, because the Army defends the country. Uh, but I want to go in and I want to learn the organization from the ground up and know uh, exactly what everything about this organization is and treat it for what its mission and its purpose is. Thank you. I'd like to open it up to any other members of the Council. Um, I saw <clears throat> Councillor Frieda's hand up first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, welcome. Thank you. Um, I actually find it pretty convincing that you have so many department heads uh, and people from emergency management here. Uh, you. Your role is pretty important when it comes to situations in Lemonster. We've had we've had many in the past, and they've all been handled very well. Um, but it takes cooperation between the mayor's office and the police department and the fire department and the, the emergency management. Yes, ma'am. And, um, you know, to have people here uh, to support your, your uh, position tonight, um, that, that speaks volumes. So uh, I look forward to that. And it and goes without saying, I'm a gold star wife, so I can fully appreciate um, your service and what you've done in the past. So, thank you, ma'am. Welcome and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Councilor Bedanza. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, welcome, Colonel. Thank you for your service. Um, your you, resume is both impressive and significant. Thank you, and I And I think your um, experience is very well suited uh, to the Office of Emergency Management. Um, I, I wonder how aware you are of the reputation of Lemister's Office of Emergency Management as being a, a pretty fine outfit uh, contributed to by some past directors who did a, an, an amazing job. Um, have you had a chance to familiarize yourself with the history of the organization a bit? I'm, I'm aware of how good it is, and I'm aware of how good the emergency response here in the city is. Uh, and both by being a resident of the city, but also candidly uh, being in other parts of the country and other parts of the world. So, you know, going back and forth from Lemister to different parts of the country and seeing how, how other states and other cities all with good people, but how they're organized and how they deal with emergencies is really an education in and of itself. To see how other countries deal with it, how they protect their citizens or perhaps don't protect them that well is also an education. So I'm, I, I'm a beneficiary of how good Lemister is. I really am. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm for one confident that you'll make the mission even better. So uh, welcome aboard, thank you. Uh, for your interest in the position, and uh, we look forward to uh, the good things that you're going to do. Thank you, sir. Councilor Angeline. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Colonel Lubbethal, good evening. Thank good. you for joining us. And uh, I know it's been said many times this evening, but I certainly want to recognize you and thank you for your distinguished service to our great country. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, your resume is truly impressive, and I actually <coughs> was going to ask you a question about part of that, you know, you led a disaster response planning as part of um, all hazards planning initiative for rapid response to disaster scenarios. And I was going to ask you to follow up on that, but right before the meeting, uh, Madam Clerk was kind enough to provide us with this information. And clearly right there it is, 15 types of disasters such as chemical spills, terror attacks, pandemics, severe storms, etc. cetera. Um, I think that if, if we did a nationwide search to try to find somebody to fill uh, Director LeBlanc's shoes, and you, you, they, you know, we get you, we, we, we hit the lottery. I am very, very impressed. And, uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, you certainly strike me as a gentleman. I've met you a couple times, but certainly a uh, gentleman that uh, would set goals and objectives define a path to achieve those objectives, and I'm convinced that you will achieve any objective that you target in the community of Lemister. So um, thank you for, for uh, coming down this evening, and I wish you the best of luck on the vote tonight. Thank you very much, sir. Council Brady. Uh, welcome, Colonel. Um, thank you. And just to reiterate what we all said, I kind of in the wow here, if we went to central casting for a perfect candidate, your name would come up. Um, one thing that incredibly impressed me is that you're a recipient of the Mass Medal of Merit. Uh, that's a pretty impressive honor to have. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I, I, I don't think I can add any more, but good luck and welcome aboard. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Any other <clears throat> counselors? I, I don't have any any specific questions, but um, I'm going to echo the sentiments of some of the other counselors. Certainly, you have some very big shoes to fill. Um, I can remember many years ago now going to Jim LeBlanc's 50th anniversary party for his service to the emergency management. This was wow. before he was uh, the director. Um, so he's been around. He was around for a long time. Um, he had unbelievable contacts all across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and uh, working with MEMA and um, I mean that that institutional knowledge is unfortunately you know gone but um, I think you certainly have the background you know to to um, handle this position and uh, the finesse to, to work with volunteers you know it's it's a little different you know you don't you don't have somebody who's who's being paid so you probably have to engage with them a little different to, you know, to, uh, you know, make sure they stay motivated and 
you know, want to come in and keep coming back and volunteering. Right. And yes, it takes a certain temperament, you know, to do that. Yes, sir. And um, I'm, I'm sure that you have that temperament. It, it seems like you do. And I wish you all the best. And if there's any ever anything we can do to help support you, don't ever um, hesitate to come and, you know, speak to us. And uh, we'll see what we can do. But I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilor Shalifo Zephyr. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Colonel, for coming down this evening. And uh, your resume is very impressive, and your experience um, I know will serve you well in this position. Thank uh, you, it, it's a wonderful organization, and uh, Jim LeBlanc left big shoes to fill, as other folks have mentioned. But the good news for you, you know, going in is that the uh, the volunteers over at the Office of Emergency Management are experienced, they are dedicated, and really committed uh, to the work that's been built up over the years. The organization has really grown, you know, yes. over the years. Yes. And, um, you know, Jim did really great work there. I see the mayor here, too, and he actually has been, you know, instrumental in getting the organization, you know, more equipment and better equipment and, you know, allowing folks to do the job that they sometimes have to do. So, um, good luck. We'll Thank see you. you around, and um, yeah, I'm sure that we'll check in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other counselors have any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Epthal, uh, again, thank you uh, for, for coming down. Um, this um, comes up a little bit later on our agenda. Okay. So if you don't mind hanging out for a little bit. Absolutely. And uh, we'll take a vote on this. Absolutely. Shortly. Madam Chair, if there's no objection, I'm gonna ask that we put it up to the front of the calendar, if that's okay with you. So yes. it'll Certainly. get done sooner than later. You'll, you'll know sooner than later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All set, Madam Chair? I am. All right. Uh, we are now going to hold the public forum. The public forum is an opportunity for any member of the audience to speak on any matter specifically listed on the council agenda. Speakers will be asked to come to the microphone and state their formal name and address along with identifying the specific item or items they wish to address. Each speaker is respectfully asked to keep their comments within a two minute time frame. The council will not be responding to or answering any questions, however, at the discretion of the council president, clarification may be given. There are a few that have signed up to speak, the first one being uh, Susan Shalafou Zephyr. Please state your name and address for the record. Excellent. Hi, my name is Su Susan Shalafou Zephyr. I live at 900 West Street here in Lemonster. And I am here this evening um, on my own behalf, not representing um, anybody except myself, here as a constituent, uh, to speak on petition 32-22. This is a petition uh, requesting a crosswalk across Mechanic Street. And um, as most of you probably are, I mean, I am very familiar with that area. It's a busy, busy um, area of Mechanic Street from you know the beginning of it down to the connector all the way to Monument Square is really busy. I don't think there's any spot on it that you wouldn't call busy. Uh, there's a lot of foot traffic. Um, many people cross Mechanic Street every single day uh, for a variety of reasons. You know, there were local businesses that people are trying to access. Uh, there's a new business owner there who is, um, uh, has a more, doesn't have a retail operation, but has a new business that he works out of. So anyways, in my opinion, this is really, it's a simple matter of public safety. Uh, there's uh, uh, this crosswalk petition, it's really a simple proposal, I think, to fix a very serious public safety problem. Um, similar to um, C48 on your calendar, on your agenda this evening, this is about helping people conduct their daily business uh, in a more safe way. Um, D Recreation Director Ms. Sumner a few weeks back at a public hearing talked about C48, which is acquiring a piece of land so that people utilizing the skate park can have safe parking off of the main Street, Viscoloid Ave. So that's, that makes a lot of sense to me because we're trying to get kids and people in and out of their automobile, not on a main street. So again, um, those w this may not be the answer to solving that public safety problem. I am not a, have no expertise in public safety and would defer to those that do. But um, I would respectfully um, ask your consideration for this proposal. I think it's very important and I think, I think we really need it. So thank you. Okay, Andrea Freeman was next.
Hi, good evening, Andrea Freeman, 431 Pleasant Street. Um, I'm here to speak in support of um, item number 3222. Um, I'm an employee and a patron uh, located um, of the businesses that are located at 52 and 54 Mechanic Street, the location we're talking about here. I, um, I now that I, I have to cross the street there anywhere from two to four times a day, I refer to it as the danger zone. I always wear my blaze um, yellow, you know, my hunter's orange. I always make sure to wear bright colors because it is like taking your life into your own hands when you need to cross there. Um, whether I w walk or I drive there, um, you know, it, it's a very risky crossing area. Um, 52 Mechanic Street happens to be um, Jenny's helping hand. It's a food pantry. We and we provide, people come in with donations of food, people come to get, people who are food insecure come to get food. And often when they take um, their contributions, whether they're bringing donations in or taking food out to their homes, often they're crossing that street two, four, six times a day. Most pedestrian crashes happen between the in months of, um, of October through March because it's, you know, it's darker more often, the weather is, the sight lines are, are, bet, are not so good. So anyways, I just tell this to say how many, you know, the volume of people that are coming, the need, the reasons why people are coming, it's not just people coming to benefit from the food pantry, it's come, the donors that are coming to donate to, as well. There's also uh, Vinda's Taylor is right there, people back and forth carrying things. Um, so anyways, I realize it's a not an ideal location for um, a crosswalk, and maybe it, you know it, it. You know, and as the department director said from DPW, is that it would need um, significant modification, and that's just what I want to encourage. It's a very special place. Lots is going on there. No surprise, it's going to need some you know special attention. Um, and you know, I, I don't know if anybody has ideas of uh, specific designs of how to make it more safe. I don't know. It's a crosswalk. The only thing that's needed, again, I think there needs some be some serious special attention there. Um, but I do know that there are two major infrastructure projects that are happening right on either side of that location of that danger zone. And that being the Twin Cities Rail Trail, um, is almost comes down to that, and in the future, hopefully, will come right down to Mechanic Street, and then also. Um, the, the Manusnock um, Brook Greenway, um, where there, that's going to be um, continuing on as well. And so basically, the nexus is right there. The rail trail comes to one point, Manusnock Brook comes to the other, and then there is that uh, crossing. So hopefully, we can look at that. Um, I would ask that the, the city look at that comprehensively because there's going to be more traffic, more pedestrian traffic, more bicycle traffic. Um, given you know these wonderful projects that are happening so i would just want you know ask there are pots of money available for these these kinds of things i don't know where it's at on our complete streets um, priority list um, and i know there's a, a sidewalk bid process but i don't know the timing of it so i just i bring these things up so you can think about it comprehensively thanks thank you very much pauline himlin My name is Pauline Hemlin, 72 Lincoln Drive, and I'm here uh, to address item 3222 because I volunteer at Ginny's, and it is scary crossing the street. People come down that street like it's the Indianapolis 500, and um, it's, it's really, there's two parking lots, people are carrying heavy things, it's an important place, and it feels scary, and you shouldn't feel scared two times to come and go because you're going somewhere that's important and to volunteer. And I got a nice email from the city today from the mayor describing how the city is going to be focusing on streets and sidewalks. So maybe this is very timely and I hope that safety can be put first. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is all that has signed up. So at this time I will ask, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak at the public forum? Once again, once again, I didn't get a chance to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Mazzarella, Mayor of the City of Leominster. Um, I was a uh, volunteer of emergency management when it was civil defense, then a police officer, and then mayor. And um, I can tell you as a lifelong resident, we have, I think what uh, Council Baranza was pointing to was we've had a incredible lineup of emergency management directors. One who did a great job and then passed the baton to somebody else who did even a better job and on and on and on it went. And it started as a small organization on Jerome Place and uh, grew to, to, to the location and uh, 
and the location's great, and you've always been supportive, but it's about the people and the volunteers, and I think the Colonel understands that. Um, just so you understand the process, I'm not sure, I was at a wake polling, uh, so I, I didn't get, I don't know how much you explained, but um, it really was, I think we, uh, we had all good candidates. Number one, we had all good candidates. And um, it was a, uh, the panel was uh, those involved in public safety, uh, police, fire, DPW, and the HR director who did the interviews. Um, they narrowed it down, and then when it was the final interview, we did a final interview together. And clearly, um, the colonel, uh, as, a, as a resident of the city that shows up to events and different activities in the city and has an interest in the city, um, it clearly, clearly seemed to be the person that if Jim LeBlanc was sitting there would have said, this is the person. This is the person to hand the baton to, if I have to hand the baton. So um, I, I think from what I heard tonight, sounds very encouraging and there were good questions and, and good support, but uh, he's the right person for that organization. And secondly, on the petition regarding Ginny's, I, I obviously as the mayor I sign off, but I, if we pass it conditionally, and I would make it conditional upon a couple of things. First, I think part of the confusion is there is parking that belongs to the building, but I don't think people use it because they don't know that you can, that's part of the building. It looks like it belongs somewhere else. So I think a sign saying parking for Ginny's would help. Secondly, um, a, the proper sight distance, because you might think you're solving the problem, it'd be great another one if people can't see you. That I think could be uh, resolved by uh, public safety, DPW engineers, and the police department. And the third thing I would say is that there are a lot of handicapped people who use it, the, the, the Ginnies, that they're, they're, I think we could make a case for a handicapped parking spot on the street out front. And the, part of the problem is that um, people will park in Bovenzi's lot, right near Mount Pleasant Ave, and then walk across the street. Then they park at the tracks, walk across the street. So there are different places. I, I only hope that we can encourage people to use the, the, the uh, crosswalk. But I do think we've got to let people know there's a parking lot to the right-hand side that belongs to that property. I saw it on the, on, on the map today. If we can encourage people to use it, that might stop people from having to cross the street all the time. And then uh, and there's a little bit of a slope, so you, you can't expect people that are handicapped or have a physical disability to, to use that slope. It's, it's beyond 2% grade. So by putting a, a handicapped spot out front, I think that would help in every capacity. But I'm certainly in favor of it. It's gonna improve safety in that area. And uh, so, thank you. So, Mayor, just yes. if you can provide some kind of clarification. Mm -hmm. You are for the petition because if you read the recommendation, mm -hmm. there's some issues there that only you would be able to help us resolve. So if we sort of give it our backing, you're willing to fulfill what needs to be, what they've said needs to yes. be done. Yes, so I sign off after you do, and then it would be conditional. I would hope it would be conditional on police, uh, the police department traffic and the engineers from the DPW to locate a safe location. So it has proper sight distance. Otherwise, we're just encouraging people, giving them a false sense of security that they're gonna be safe walking across the street when somebody might not see them. It's also in the, it's also in the east and the west, and you get that sunlight. So the last thing we would want is put people in the sidewalk with, without proper sight distance and, and have the sun be an issue and have somebody run over. That would be the worst. So, and the second would be to put a sign letting people know they can park in that other lot, because they can. Um, it belongs to the building, it belongs to the property, and the third part, again, is something we can look at later on is if, as to whether we could put a handicap spot out front because the parking for, the, for that building has a, a, a greater, a percent, uh, two, greater than 2% grade, and, and somebody that's handicapped or has a physical disability isn't gonna be able to use it. So we'd have to find a place along the street. So I'm trying to encourage people to stay on the same side as Ginny's, but when they can't, let's provide them with a, a, a safe crosswalk, otherwise, we're just putting people in danger. And we've had this before. Down there, what used to be, down near Walgreens, same sort of situation where the police department recommended against it because it just wasn't safe. Um, so they blacked it out and we moved it down the street and it seems to be working. Okay. So that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would anybody else like to uh, speak at the public forum? Once again, would anybody else like to speak at the public forum? And for the third and final time, would anybody else like to speak at the public forum? Seeing none, I will declare the public forum closed and we will now uh, be back in session and we will move uh, right into communications from the mayor beginning with C-50, Madam Clerk. 
C-50, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, request an appropriation of $50,000 be made to the Gallagher Building Maintenance Account, the same account to be transferred from the Gallagher Building Revolving Account, regarding to cover expenses related to the Gallagher Building Maintenance. Okay, and C-50 will be referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Regular course, please. Okay, C-50 has been given regular course. Moving on to C-51. C-51. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requested an appropriation of $20,000 to be made to the Municipal Building Maintenance Account, the same amount to be transferred from the Stabilization Fund, regarding unexpected repairs to the elevator and heating system. And C-51, once again, will be referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Regular course. Okay, once again, C-51 has been given regular course. C-52. C-52. Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests an appropriation of $7,000 be transferred from the Wetland Protection Act Fund to the Conservation Commission salary line for part-time clerks regarding funding of two interns. Okay, C-52 is also referred to the Chairman of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Regular course. Okay, C-52 is given regular course. <coughs> Moving on to petitions first time on the calendar, 39-22, Madam Clerk. 39-22, Gaitlin Huffman, City Clerk, requests a new section of the City of Lemonster Revised Ordinances, Chapter 1, Section 1.12, regarding an electioneering policy for the City of Lemonster. And 39-22 is referred to the Chairman of Legal Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, regular course, and I understand we have a public hearing that's been established on March 14th, 2022 at 6.40 p.m. Okay, so um, we are giving this regular course and we need to establish that public hearing for March 14th, 2022 at 6.40 p.m. All those in favor of establishing that hearing signify in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of nine to zero. That hearing has been established. Moving on to 40-22. 40-22, Caitlin Huffman, City Clerk, requests to accept a gift of 14 shares valued at $714 per chair from AIS Inc. of Lemonster, Massachusetts. And 40-22 is referred to the Chairman of Finance. Regular course, Mr. President. Okay, 40-22 has been given regular course. Moving on to matters before the City Council, beginning with the financial report. Mr. Chairman, are you ready to report? I am, Mr. President. Um, we started the fiscal year with a balance in the stabilization account of $19,904,603. During the course of the fiscal year since July 1, we've added interest in the amount of $29,621. And at the same time, we have approved or we have pending um, reductions to the account in the total amount of $3,650,998 leaving a balance of $16,283,226. I'm happy to report to you this evening that uh, free cash has been certified and the amount of free cash that was certified by the Department of Revenue was $15,248,198. I should explain, uh, just to put this into some kind of perspective, that um, that number will be reduced by an adjustment of $1,978,596, which re relates to something the auditors picked up. Uh, when the water and sewer charges were closed out for fiscal 20, um, the money uh, was actually not moved off of the uh, asset books of the water and sewer department into the general fund. So this is being made up now with respect to that particular adjustment. Um, in addition to that, we are returning to the um, um, Water and Sewer Department the amount of unused funds from the last fiscal year. In water, that's $1,424,576. And in sewer, that's $1,359,328. So the, those are two more reductions. Then, of course, as past practice, we are going to repay the stabilization fund for the amounts that we've reduced it over the course of the fiscal year. In the total amount, uh, consistent with what I just read, of $3,650,998. And then additionally, we are anticipating making up school transportation expenses, which we typically do uh, from excess and deficiency in the amount of approximately 700,000. When all those reductions are, are made, 
we are down to the six million one hundred thirty four thousand seven hundred dollars uh, that uh, is left over from uh, in free cash. Last year, you might remember the free cash certification was a little lower than we usually expect at about five point five million. And in part, that was because of that fiscal year 20 adjustment where the funds actually didn't make it uh, into the free cash certification because they weren't closed out properly in that uh, fiscal 20 uh, closeout. And that uh, gives you a little bit of perspective on that. Um, I talked to the comptroller and she suggested in relationship to the, the amount of free cash that the city has this year and has in the past, that Lemister is pretty tight in terms of capital allotment and the regular budget process, and also at the same time, very conservative with respect to revenue estimates. So that of course balloons our free cash or our excess deficiency account uh, each year. That's just simply the way that the finance team does it. I think from a city council perspective, at least for me, um, knowing that a lot of this money has to come after, out of stabilization to be used for capital needs and having it come down before us requiring a two-thirds vote gives us a greater control over the process. So I, for one, see this as, as, as somewhat of a benefit. So that's a little bit um, of what's going on with free cash. And I also want to point out, because I'm not sure how, how public this has been, that, um, you know, as a city, uh, we can use, uh, we can go up on our levy limit in addition to new growth, 2.5%, the you know, so-called proposition two and a half levy. This year, um, for the first time in a long time, we did not use our full levy capacity under two and a half. We used 1.44%. I would challenge you to find many cities or towns that did not use their full levy capacity. Um, that, while we're building a $30 million police station without an override or without a uh, debt exclusion. So the picture is pretty bright, all in all, I think, and uh, that is my financial report for this evening, Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions regarding the financial report? Councilor Frieda. Not a question, just a comment. Ray Racine was just waiting for your your uh, money given to him for his water and sewer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, glad to, we're glad to get it back where it belongs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all set. If, thank you very much, You're Mr. Welcome. Chairman. Um, at this point, I will ask that we move the appointment to the top of the calendar, and I will refer uh, the appointment to the Chairwoman of Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, obviously, we had a, a interview here with the Colonel, and uh, everybody's had a chance to look over his resume. I think he was very open, very forthcoming with us, of uh, and, and actually a little bit modest about his accomplishments when you look at his uh, his resume and and the referral letters. Um, we, he has great support from the from the city leaders here. Um, I think he, that he will do well over at the Office of Emergency Management. And it would be um, my recommendation that we approve the appointment and I'd ask you to check with members of my committee. Okay, Councillor Ardinger. I concur. <clears throat> and Councillor Deacon. Absolutely, I concur. Okay, so it looks like a unanimous decision, uh, Madam Chair. It is. To grant the uh, appointment of three years <clears throat> to I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong, I'm looking for the other. <laughs> for three years beginning uh, March 1st, 2022. Is there any other comments or discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll, I'll do this in a roll call vote beginning with Councilor Bedanza. Yay. Councilor Pauline Cormier. Yay. Councilor Ardinger. Yay. Councilor Angelini. Yay. Councilor Brady. Yay. Councilor Shalafo Zephyr? Yay. Councilor Deacon? Yay. Councilor Frieda? Yay. And I will be recorded as yay uh, by a vote of nine to zero. Arthur Elbethal has been uh, appointed to the Director of Emergency Management. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, moving on to Items under finance C-46, Madam, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, are you ready to report? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests an appropriation in the amount of $50,000 be made to the highway capital account. The same amount to be transferred from the stabilization account 
RE, Safe Routes to School Appraisal. This is an interesting um, matter. Um, this started off with a, a $250,000 grant with the state to improve the sidewalks adjacent to the Francis Drake School on Visco Lloyd Avenue. And the state has uh, increased the uh, grant money to the tune of $3 million. So the entire project now is to redo the sidewalks on both sides of Visco Lloyd Ave for the entire length of Visco Lloyd Ave to improve the intersection at the uh, Johnson and uh, Viscoloid Avenue, to improve uh, the crosswalks at uh, Mechanic and Viscoloid, as well as at Allencrest, and to pave uh, Viscoloid Avenue. So it's become a pretty significant project. Um, this $50,000 is necessary to pay for appraisals necessary for takings um, along the street. The councilors might be familiar with the process. We went through this on Mechanic Street, as well as up on North Street. Uh, so there are small slivers of land that'll be necessary to install these sidewalks um, properly. And uh, before you can uh, take somebody's property by eminent domain, even if it's a friendly process, you still need an appraisal. Um, so that's what this money's for. You should know, in addition to the appraisal money, that there's going to be an exposure to the city uh, for the costs <coughs> of the damages re relative to these takings. Um, originally, the estimate of all of those takings was a half million dollars. Um, I'm happy to report that John Roseberry now believes that number to be more in tune with a couple hundred thousand dollars as a result of many residents who generously decided to donate their sliver of land to the city and they're still coming in, uh, and that number may become even more favorable. But even sort of at a worst case scenario, uh, we would be spending $250,000 to leverage $3 million and do some really significant improvements to that street, which of course enhances the safety of the school students and all those using Francis Drake, as well as the area in general. So it would be my position, Mr. President, to grant C-46, and I'd ask you to check with members of my committee. Thank you very much, Councillor Pauline Cormier. I agree. And Councillor Angelini. I'll make it unanimous, Mr. Okay. President. Okay, so you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Finance Committee to grant C-46. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting C-46 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of nine to zero, C-46 has been granted. Does the chairman have an order? I do, Mr. President. Order that the sum of $50,000 be transferred from the stabilization fund to the highway capital account. Move for the adoption of the order. Okay, you've heard the request for the adoption of the order. All those in favor of adopting the order signify by saying, we gotta do a roll call. All right, um, so we will um, do this in roll call, beginning with Council Bedanza. Yay. Council Pauline Cormier. Yay. Council Ardinger. Yay. Council Angelini. Yay. Council Brady. Yay. Council Shalafu Zephyr. Yay. Council Deacon. Yay. Council Frida. Yay. And I will be recorded as yay by a vote of nine to zero. C-46 has, um, has been accepted. Uh, moving on to a ratification of a vote, C-47. Yes, Mr. President, it's C-47, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, requests an appropriation in the amount of $250,000 be made to the police department salary and wages account, the same amount to be transferred from the stabilization fund. This is regarding overtime funding. This was before us at our last meeting under 3.9 of the charter as an emergency preamble. That same section requires a ratification vote after the approval in the first meeting. Uh, for the public, uh, under certain circumstances, we can approve uh, measures the first time they're introduced to the council, which is exactly what happened with C-47. And now, in conformity with the charter, uh, we require a ratification vote. Uh, at the time, the council and the public re may remember that there was a case made for uh, necessary funding in the overtime account at the police department based on a whole variety of problems, ranging from a shortage of manpower and COVID, uh, and the necessity of, uh, of unusual overtime expenses would be my position, Mr. President, to recommend, recommend that we ratify the vote. Okay, and I'll check with Councilor Pauline Cormier. I agree. And Councilor Angelini. I must say the finance uh, chair's explanations and detailed uh, this evening are making it quite easy to be uh, in agreement. Okay, so you've heard the uh, unanimous recommendation of of finance to grant C-47. Is there any further discussion? 
Seeing none, uh, we will do this also in a roll call vote, beginning with Councillor Bedanza. Yay. Councillor Cormier. Yay. Councillor Ardinger. Yay. Councillor Angelini. Yay. Councillor Brady. Yay. Councillor Shalfu Zephyr. Yay. Councillor Deacon. Yay. Councillor Frieda. Yay. And I will be recorded as yay by a vote of uh, nine to zero. C-47 has been ratified. Moving on to items under ways and means beginning with 33-22. We can't take them in block. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, 33-22, John Andre Sejan on behalf of George's Fine Jewelers Incorporated request to renew license to deal secondhand articles at 255 North Street. Uh, this was given um, regular course. I can tell you that I have reviewed the packet and just, I know that, Mr. President, that we can't take these in block, but just to kind of inform the public, each application um, that gets submitted gets submitted with a completed application, a certificate of liability insurance, a certificate of good standing from the City of Lemister's Treasurer's Office, and a certificate of good standing from the Lemister Police Department. So when I report that the application is complete. It's I've gone through each one and each application is complete and has uh, has met all the qualifications. So with all of the referrals in, everything in good order, I would ask that, um, I would suggest that we renew this license and I'd ask you to pull my committee. <coughs> okay, Councillor Ardinger. I agree. Councillor Deacon. I agree. Okay, so you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee to grant 33-22. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 33-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of nine to zero, 33-22 uh, has been granted. Moving on to 34-22, Madam Chair, you ready to report? Yes, Fred R. Tusigno on behalf of Fred's Auction requests to renew license to deal secondhand articles at 92 Pleasant Street. This was given regular course on February 14th. All our referrals are in. The application is complete. It would be uh, my recommendation that we grant 34-22 and I'd ask you to consult the members of my committee. Okay, Councillor Ardinger. I agree. And Councillor Deacon. I agree. Okay, so you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee to grant 34-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 34-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of nine to zero, 34-22 has been granted. Moving on to 35-22. John Andre Sejan, on behalf of House of Relics, requests to renew license to deal secondhand articles at 1292 Main Street. Again, I have reviewed the packet. I find it to be complete and all um, referrals are in. It'd be my recommendation that we grant the new license and I'd ask you to pull the members of my committee. Okay, Councilor Ardinger. I agree. Councilor Deacon. I agree. Okay, you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee to grant 35-22. Is there any discussion? Um, just a quick question. I noticed on the application there's a, there's a small amount um, taxes due. Does that need to be cleared up before it's? Madam Clerk, if you'd like to. At the time elaborate. that we got the referral, um, the we talked to the treasurer collector uh, Paul Redman, and he confirmed that since it's within this fiscal year, and the end of the fiscal year hasn't expired yet, that he was okay with letting it go forward. Okay. All right. Is there any other? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 35-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of nine to zero, 35-22 has been granted. Moving on to 36-22. 36-22, Joshua Almeida, on behalf of GameStop number 3594, request to renew license to deal secondhand articles at 26 Orchard Hill Park. Again, I have reviewed the application. I find it to be complete and it would be my recommendation that we grant this license and I'd ask you to pull the members of my committee. Okay, Councillor Ardinger. I agree. Councillor Deacon. I agree. Okay, you've heard the recommendation uh, of the Ways and Means Committee to grant 36-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 36-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed by a vote of nine to zero, 36-22 has been granted. Moving on to 38-22. 
38-22, Joanne L. Atwood on behalf of the Repair Palace Incorporated, request to renew license to deal secondhand articles at 11 Sack Boulevard. Again, I've reviewed the application. I find it to be in good order. It'd be my recommendation that we grant this license and I'd ask you to poll the members of my committee. Once again, Councilor Aringer. I agree. Councilor Deacon. I agree. Okay, you've heard the unanimous recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee to grant 38-22. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 38-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of nine to zero, 38-22 has been granted. Moving on, continuing with items under Ways and Means, C-48, Madam Chair, are you ready to report? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, C-48, this is uh, Dean J. Mazzarella, Mayor, request City Council to vote to accept the resolution to transfer property located at the corner of Johnson and Carter Streets. Um, we did receive some communication. Madam Clerk, does the entire resolution need to be read into the record? Sorry, yeah. Okay. A resolution to transfer property located at the corner of Johnson and Carter Streets in the city of Lemister to the city and to dedicate to and designate said property as active recreational land under the care, custody, and control of the Lemister Recreation Department. Whereas the French Hill area of the city of Lemister is a densely popu populated area with a high population of children and the renovation and expansion of the Johnson Street Skate Park to a skate and bike park is a priority for the city of Lemister and whereas the Johnson Street Skate Bike Park will greatly enhance the French Hill neighborhood by creating recreational opportunities immediately adjacent to the Francis Drake School and the Allen Crest Housing Development and Whereas the main focus of the park is to expand biking and skateboarding opportunities for youth across the city of Lemister and whereas the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support the preservation and restoration of ur urban parks through the Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities Grant Program and whereas a portion of the park will be located on land currently owned by the Lemister School Committee <coughs> and held for school purposes by order of taking recorded with the Worcester North District Registry of Deeds, book 1059, page 571, and whereas the school committee has voted that the property is no longer needed for school purposes, and whereas the property is transferred from the school committee to the city of Lemister and is dedicated to and designated as active recreational land under chapter 45, section three by deed, and this vote to be under the care, custody, and control of the Lemister Recreation Department. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the one that the care, custody, and control of the property described in an order of taking, recorded with the Worcester North District Registry of Deeds, book 1059, page 571, is transferred from the school committee for school purposes to the Lemister Recreation Department for active recreational use under the provisions of Chapter 45, Section 3 and designated for and dedicated as active recreational use in perpetuity and that the res that this resolution shall take effect upon passage. Um, as we all know that the, the city, um, I'm sorry, there's other communications that we did receive and I believe Madam Clerk, I need to read these into the record as well. Okay, um, in a letter to Caitlin Huffman, city clerk from the Department of Public Works. This is regarding the communication C-48. Dean J. Mazzarella, mayor, requests the city council review and accept the proposed resolution to transfer property at the corner of Johnson and Carter Street in the city of Lemster to the city and dedicated and dedicate to and designate set property as active recreational land under the care, custody, and control of the Lemister Recreation Department. Dear Caitlin, the Lemister Department of Public Works has reviewed the communication to accept the resolution to transfer property at the corner of Johnson and Carter Street in the city of Lemister to the city and to dedicate to and designate said property as active recreational land under the care, custody, and control of the Lemister Recreation Department. The DPW approves this communication as submitted. 
Uh, with regards, Raymond Racine, DPW Director. From the, uh, and a letter from the Lemister Recreation Department to the Lemister School Committee. Dear school committee members, Lemister Recreation Department received a grant and donations to construct a new skate park in memory of Frankie Fortuna and a pump track that will be located at Johnson Street with the Zamar Shepherd Johnson Street Playground. This playground area on Johnson Street is under the jurisdiction of the Recreation Department and abuts school property. There is a cars width strip of land to the right of the playground area deeded for school purposes. Attaches the map and deed book 1059, page 571 to this property for your review. Currently, we are in the process of trying to complete the design and location of the parking lot. This needs to be completed for the project to go out to big bid and be finished by June of 2022. The skate park committee cannot complete the de design until we can determine where to fit off street parking. The ideal location would be on part of the small strip of school department property. We are requesting to have the school committee turn over this small strip of land to the recreation department so we can expand the parking area to the new skate park and pump track. And we um, appreciate your consideration of this request. Judith Sumner, director of recreation. So the, um, my understanding is the, the property has been turned over, the, the school have agreed to turn it over to the recreation department. Um, this is a project that is uh, near and dear to my own heart being in my ward. I think that this is a worthy um, project. I, th I think the age group that are most likely to use this project are a, 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 a group of younger people that have nowhere else to go. Uh, I think this is a, something that they have pushed for. I can report that they did, um, the friends of Frankie Fortuna and his family did get some private donations um, and, and, and continue, uh, is my understanding, to raise funds to dedicate to this park. So it would be um, my recommendation that we accept this uh, resolution. And I'd ask you to poll the members of my committee. Okay, <coughs> Councilor Ardinger. Uh, Mr. President, I, um, my son is on the committee that uh, oversees this uh, project. And even though I don't think we have any financial uh, um, results from this at all, uh, I'm gonna to ask to just for uh, clarity to recuse for myself from this. Okay. okay. Sure, there, you, there is some public funding that's involved, so yeah. if you have an immediate family member, that's best. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Deacon? Uh, I agree with Madam Chair. Okay, so it, it sounds like we have a um, unanimous vote uh, to grant C-48 of the Mr. two. President. Uh, Mr. President, <clears throat> for the same reasons, I'd like to recuse myself. My daughter's on the committee. Okay, all right. All right, so we have a uh, two to zero um, recommendation of the Ways and Means Committee to grant C-48. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting C-48 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of seven to zero, C-48 has been granted. Moving on to C-49. Oh, I'm sorry, we, we did do that one already. That was the appointment. <clears throat> Moving on to items under public service, and I will just say from the outset that I do need to recuse myself on 37-22 because it does involve my employer, but um, actually, I think at this point, I'm gonna let the Vice President, Madam Vice President, do you wanna handle 37-22 and handle the vote on that? Because I'm gonna abstain. Okay. Yes, thank I'm, you. I'm going to abstain, so you can handle this. 37-22, uh, we had a public hearing um, earlier this evening, and... Oh, that, that's... <laughs> and seeing that, no, I, okay, I have two different Sorry. questions. I will... 
send that over to the Chairwoman of Public Service. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. 37-22, uh, Massachusetts Electric Company, DBA National Grid in Verizon, New England, Inc. requests permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting figure fixtures along and across the following public way. This is in front of um, 644 Lancaster Street. We had a public hearing, public, yeah, public hearing, excuse me, earlier this evening, um, and the homeowner who initially requested the pole be moved back in June was recently uh, told that the cost of that was over $11,000 and would be prohibitive. And um, I, it was his, um, uh, my sense from my understanding from him was that he did not want this to proceed. So my recommendation would be to give this petition leave to withdraw without prejudice. And Madam Chair, I would ask that you pull my committee, Council Frieda and Council Brady. Council Frieda, I agree. And Council Brady, I agree. Sorry. Okay, it's a unanimous recommendation then that 37-22 be given leave to withdraw without prejudice. Okay, we've all heard the unanimous recommendation of the Public Service Committee to have for leave to withdraw. <coughs> and does this is ju this just a? And is there any other questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor of granting 37-22 leave to withdraw, please verify in the usual manner by a vote of eight to zero. 37-22 has been granted leave to withdraw. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Vice President. And 32-22, uh, an item under public, uh, Councilor Schaup was that for? Mm -hmm. um, Mr. President, I will be um, abstaining from 32-22 as I'm the petitioner and one of the business owners. Okay. All right, so you have an interest there, I understand. Uh, Councillor Deacon, you get your first petition um, referred to you, and I think, I think the mayor made it easy for you. He served yep. it up on a silver platter, so I will hand this to you and ask you if you're ready to report. I am ready to report, Mr. President. Public Safety 32-22, Pauline Cormier, Ward 2 Councillor, and Susan Shalafu Zephyr request that the City Council approve placement of a crosswalk across Mechanic Street near 52, and 54 Mechanic Street to assist patrons of local business, businesses, excuse me, safe transit across Mechanic Street. This was given a uh, regular course to uh, public safety and traffic. Uh, referrals went out and I got responses both from uh, DPW and from uh, Police Department Traffic Division. And I'd like to add them into the uh, report. Okay, if you'd like to, um, if you could just Elaborate, read them or summarize yep. them? Yep. Sure. I uh, received both uh, reports on the 24th of February from uh, DPW director and from uh, Chief Kennedy. I'll read uh, Chief Kennedy's uh, first in regards to uh, Officer Ramos is a traffic officer, so he, he uh, wrote the letter. To the Honorable City Council, <clears throat> proposed sidewalk near 52 and 54 Mechanic Street. I, Officer Julio Ramos, and along with my counterpart from the Lemesa DPW, Mr. Thomas Bissonnet, went over to this location to see where it is. there is a feasible location to put this proposed, proposed sidewalk. First, I would like to state that the sidewalk would not meet MUTDC guidelines, but if one should be built, Mr. Bissonnet and I marked off the location where this crosswalk should be built. Pictures were taken of the location that were marked off and those are included in our, in our packet. The current sidewalk needs to be brought down to the level of the roadway. Yellow handicap spaces need to be placed on each side of the crosswalk. No parking signs need to be placed on both sides of the sidewalk where the proposed crosswalk is to be placed. Finally, the parking lot across the street, which he believes is city property, would require one spot designated as handicap parking. Uh, the letter from uh, Commissioner Racine. This is in response of our fellow councils in regards to petition 32-22. <clears throat> we agree with the opinion of the police department that this is not an ideal area for a crosswalk. Some fairly significant modifications will need to occur to create a safer area to cross. 
handicap accessibility needs to be installed along with signage and no parking zones. If approved, we would include this in our next sidewalk program uh, bid process. If, addition, if additional information is needed, please contact our office. Sincerely, Raymond Racine, the Director of Public Works. I have uh, read the referrals. Uh, as I stated, uh, the pictures are also in the packet with the petition along with 100 signed signatures in favor of it. Uh, I ask you, Mr. President, uh, please ask the two petitioners for their opinion, Councilor Cormier, Councilor uh, Charles Fuzefo. Um, I believe public safety and traffic is uh, Councilor Charles Fuzefo who's abstaining and Councilor Ardinger, what's your... Um um, I think I generally support this, but uh, my question is, should we maybe give it further time or something to, you know, see if these uh, conditions are going to be met before we approve it? Or do we have to approve it now? <coughs> well, just, just to offer clarity, um, I, I, think, I think the mayor has stated that he's willing to, he's willing to do the work that needs to be done that they outlined, you know, with this next sidewalk program. And, um, I mean, he served it up on a silver platter, he's willing to do it, so. Um, I, and honestly, this is not, a, it's not an ordinance, and as I stated before, it's just going to give the counselors that have these concerns in that neighborhood, the, the Ward 2 counselor and the, uh, the, uh, the other one that um, had to recuse herself, but is one of the petitioners, um, it's just gonna give them the backing to go see the mayor, but he already came down and that he's willing, so okay. just to offer clarity that I think that's where we stand. Okay, so then, I, uh, then with that I agree. Okay, good, yes. Councilor Deacon. Yes, Mr. President, I recommend that we, uh, we forward the petition for passage subject to design by DPW and traffic. Okay, okay. With, with those conditions that, with the conditions that were set forth? Yes, Excuse please. Me, Mr. President, yeah. uh, there was one additional uh, condition that the mayor put in there that a uh, handy hat handicapped parking spot be placed in front of the uh, Jenny's Correct. Uh, property. Right. So I believe that the Wood 2 Councilor can work on that. That would be a petition that would need to come okay. to, to, to designate that as well. So um, that's something that she could work on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you have a unanimous uh, recommendation of those that are participating yep. to, to grant the 32-22 and give it our backing and let the uh, councilors work this out. Um, is there any other discussion? Councillor Angelini. Thank you, Mr. President. I just uh, wanted to confess that I think I would have been a bit apprehensive uh, on this petition this evening, and the mayor's appearance was timely. Uh, it certainly makes, it's gonna make my vote a lot easier this evening, so I'll leave it there. Thank you. I agree. Councillor Frieda, did I see your hand as well? Uh, just out of curiosity. Out of curiosity to the clerk, why is this a two-thirds vote? That's an error. It should be a majority vote. Majority. Mm -hmm. um, just Brady. a point in um, um, the officer's letter. He believed that lot to be city property. That's actually one of my overflow lots. So that's private property. But the owner of the lot has offered to donate it if we need that. Okay, well, let's thank you for that clarity as well, Councilor Brady. All right, Councilor, Councilor Cormier. Um, I just wanna, I wanna throw in my two cents here. Obviously, this is an important issue to me. Um, uh, Mr. President, I wanna thank you for allowing us to put this on the agenda and to have it heard. Um, I, and, I, and I know really crosswalks in their placement are not in our, in our purview. Um, but this, you allowed us, this is the vehicle that we have. This is a serious safety concern. Getting the open um, dialogue that we had here, it got us the chance to, to speak with the DPW, to speak with the tra traffic officer and get their input. Certainly, the mayor coming down here tonight was, was a very pleasant surprise. His backing on this, um, and, and it shows the, the care that went into to looking at this, and it gave us the chance to take a very serious public service, um, a, a public safety issue, and give it a voice. And, and, and so for that, I thank you for allowing us to get this on the agenda. 
And, uh, and I, I hope that we can get everybody to get behind this since we're gonna have the backing of the mayor's office. We could put in uh, whatever, at least it gives us a vehicle now to work with his office with the, with, with the sign that, that he is going to go forward on it and support it, so thank you. Okay, and Council Badins, did I see your hand as well? Yeah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to mention that, you know, when this thing first came before us, obviously like a lot of you, I had concerns about the construction of it from the point of view of public safety uh, and the standards. Um, I think there's a lot of moving parts in that neighborhood. You know, the rail trail was mentioned, um, the improvements to the Minusnock Brook were mentioned uh, by one of the speakers in the public forum. Um, you know, so this really belongs with the experts. So I think the chairman's position with respect to passage, but subject to DPW and traffic design makes sense. So we can hopefully move the ball forward, but at the same time, when it's ultimately installed, installed so it doesn't make the situation worse. Okay. All right. Is there any other, um, any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting 32-22 signify in the usual manner. Those opposed, by a vote of eight to zero, 32-22 has been granted. And I will say to the petitioners, normally I say, you know, best of luck, but I, I think the luck's already on your side, as we said with the mayor, so that's good news. All right, is there any um, other new business to come before the city council? So free. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I don't know who this should go to, maybe to the <laughs> chair of finance. Um, I had a constituent call me, um, and I had to actually dig it out because we all got our excise tax. There's a form within our excise tax, um, and it talks about a taxation aid committee chaired by the chairman of the board of assessors and the treasurer. Um, with the mayor appointing three residents to the board. And the board will adopt regulations necessary to identify the recipients of such aid. Um, this constituent wanted to know who the uh, three members of the board were. I don't, I'm sure we must have approved three residents at some point in time. I'm not sure who they might be. And what the regulations are, if we can get a copy of this so I can kind of answer the question. Sure, I'll investigate that, Councilor. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other uh, items to come into new business? Do you, some, do you have this or do you want I have you it. Want it? Okay. Seeing none, any under old business? Seeing none, any under community calendar? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, Councilor. But Danza, I, I saw so many hands so fast, but I think I, I think I saw yours just in the nick of time first. And then Councillor Angelini, uh, all those in favor of adjournment signify in usual manner. Those opposed, we are now adjourned. Thank you all very much. Lemonster City Council meeting is funded in part by DeCarolis Insurance Agency at www.decarolisinsuranceagency.com.